Jackson. Uh, this is Jane Avery. Uh, it's uh, November the 1st, um, uh, late um, Wednesday afternoon. I have a probation revocation hearing coming up tomorrow. And I'm going to be just, uh, just a, 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 a media collage of different things to put together. I'm trying to, I'm, I have a, I used to say I have an expressive language disorder. And I really can't have trouble coming up with words on my own, so I have to find other people's words that kind of come close. So this has something to do with um, mental illness. Um, uh, is it not true that we are too much in the habit of doing our asylum practice in a routine manner? Large institution, uh, that, that could be jailed or a mental asylum, with their numerous colonies of patients are apt to make uh, treat those under our care as a whole rather than as individual. And, um, and we are likely to regard many cases as chronic when there should be much hope or benefit. So um, I'm, um, basically what I've been learning going through the system uh, even though I'm not an indigent, um, I've been involuntarily committed to the, to the the other end of American health care, and I witnessed that the, that we are pretty much treated like herd herd health medicine instead of um, personalized medicine, and uh, that it was a large prison net that had to operate on a budget that they could come up with, uh, catching many mentally ill patients they could, with most of them falling through the cracks. And it, uh, and we thought it was so delegated out that there was no really one person that knew everything enough about one patient. So um, it didn't work for me, and I'm sure it doesn't work for a lot of people. I'm sure they do catch people with classic cases, but the vast majority of them, I think, falls the crack and uh, just do and get quite adequate care. But uh, of course, there's likely to be a good deal of difference of opinion as to what constitutes a recovery from mental illness. And those who pose for the applause of of undiscriminated, undiscriminated general public can, general, can produce general average of recovery that are not to be understood by the, the uninitiated. But, but we can all examine ourselves and truthfully say we have done our very best for those committed to our care. So I'm being committed to the care of uh, the Cal County court system. And uh, I'm going to hold the judge responsible for all my neighbor's behavior. And what I can't, you know, what I'm coming up against is, is I'm gay, I'm atheist, I have a crystal meth addiction. I did my own crystal meth addiction, and, um, and I'm also been diagnosed, you know, just without really even getting a chance to talk to a psychiatrist, I've been bipolar with uh, many years of psychic feature. And um, I've also been years of accurate some. Um, there used to be many years, and that's just my, with a knife in my head, I'm making fun of Christian. The first 18 years of my life, I was born into the first, eight, first United Methodist Church in Christ, Christ in Arkansas. I was raised by the church right after I graduated from high school. I step up to a house, but can never really go the way. I have always been, and forever always will be Methodist, no less than Jesus that will stop being a Jew. So I realized that only reason is an adult. Although I label myself a radical atheist, that I've always been, and forever always will be Methodist, no less than Jesus that will stop being a Jew. So, um, you know, I won't, you know, but, so I want to be both Methodist and atheist at the same time while refusing to label myself a Christian. As that tells you absolutely nothing about anyone. Now, if others want to label me as a Christian for whatever reasons of their own, they are more than welcome to do so. But they got to be realized halfway around the world from them. Um, a Muslim extremists are going to be labeling me a Christian, one of them, whether I prove this or not. So I believe they keep me right going into their churches, your churches, and, and calling you out on your understanding of the Bible. I can just read it just as well as you can. So uh, this is what I like about being the atheist, that not choosing to believe in zero God as opposed to no God. As you find no two people on the planet agreeing exactly the same way as to what it means believing in God, then far as I can we have just a mini God, and we have people claiming to believe in one, have ever claimed to believe in one, and forever will be claiming to believe in one until no longer anyone left than and able claiming to believe in one. Then God in time teaches to exist until we have another observer, and then God in time will do start this whole process all over again. So by believing in zero God, between me and another person of faith, we have a God there. I'm already agreeing with them. If there is to be a God, by definition, there can only be one. Which leaves it with getting the God we have, not the one you choose. So, oh no, not going to be thinking of believing just because I claim to believe. Blame myself an atheist. This automatically puts God on your side behind you against me. That's not how it works. We get the God we have, not the one you choose. So, I believe Jesus was just using his knowledge of the Old Testament story, using Ezekiel 33, sending himself up as the watchman trying to get the people away from virtuing God that favors himself to one that we all share. And um, so if I live with someone an atheist, it's not because I don't believe in God, it's because I don't believe you. So, um, 
And I'm up now, I'm finding that controversy political. You know, people just meant it as an opinion. But it's really not an opinion. It's simply the fact I'm saying that until all of our people of faith get together and, and agree exactly to the same God, what that means, then then and only then will I believe in one God. And uh, so basically, you know, zero, one, 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 everybody believes in one God, but we have more than one God, then what they believe in the same God, zero, 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 I will believe in that. That's my understanding of the millennium. That's, I don't know if that's what they meant by it in the Bible, but it's an uh, instrument I can use. So I believe Jesus was trying to show his quality of a good leader, trying to disappoint his own people and the way they can absorb. And because of that you know, opinion of mine, belief, whatever you want to call it, um, I'm coming up to get a lot of prejudice, bias, and um, and uh, I did my own Christian method edition by telling everyone, when you do your own Christian method edition, uh, that means you're not going to have the support group waiting to have to stay off of it. I can stop it. I just need attention for that all the time afterward to, uh, to help me stay off of it. Well, everybody wants me to go back home to Arkansas where my family is. But that's Trump County, 60%. This is, uh, 80, this is DeKalb County, 80%. Clinton, you're my family now. And uh, this is uh, uh, your test. Uh, uh, I, I adopted your belief, or what's supposed to be your belief, politically. And I refuse to let my family become gun lovers get credit for this. You're going to get credit for this. The Cap County, and I'm holding the judge, Bob Judge McCord, responsible for your behavior. And um, if there's a line that can be reached where you, even our liberals, resort to manipulation, deception, pernicious prevarication, looking the other way, refusing to lie, feigning and ignorant, that's what the three monkeys are. They can generally mean a sound mind, body, and action, or they can mean looking the other way, refusing to lie, feigning and ignorant. In other words, counting on the first step. If there's a line that can be reached, where I even not a liberal, but resort to manipulation, deception, pernicious prevarication, looking the other way, refusing not a plain and inward. Then I don't care how far apart these lines are as it relates to the difference between our liberal and our conservative. In the end, after all is said and done, you are no better or different than they are. Hypocrite. And uh, is it still recording? Yeah, it's still recording. You okay. just have to check. Um, uh, um, hypocrite. So I'm going to have the judge responsible for your, for the county behavior. And, um, and when I came across, he, he mentioned, uh, did internet research, he mentioned being one of the founding members of uh, the George Anderson Project. And, and what the George Anderson Project does is it frees the imprisoned innocent through DNA testing, advanced practices that maximizes the chances, minimizes the chances of others suffering the same fate, educate the public that imprisonment the innocent is neither an isolated nor rare event, and help the exonerated go alive. And um, so basically, these are cases that didn't have now, they have the DNA evidence available now, but they weren't able to test it then. So, yeah, that's a given. Yeah, you should exonerate the uh, prison innocent. That's a given. But it, but it, it goes on more uh, what the, on the website, George Anderson Project. This is what it has to say. The George Anderson Project is a small, independent, nonprofit that relies on grant and individual donation to raise its annual budget. The process of researching, investigating, and litigating our case is often enormously and costly and time consuming. Exoneration takes not weeks or months, but years, and sometimes even decades. Every contribution we receive, no matter how small, helps us in our mission to free the innocent in prison. Now, we're talking about DNA evidence that's present, available now, but they weren't able to test then. Why is it taking so long? And, uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, you have to go through a lot of litigation to get the court to accept it, even though that they could. So, so basically what the lawyers are doing is they're guaranteeing themselves a job by making this so complicated. If you think about it, Washington's all lawyers. They could change all this law to make it easier, but they'd rather not. But they, they're not going to work themselves out of a job. The American legal system functions based on the assumption that judges, jury, jury and prosecutors do not make mistakes. An indigent prisoner loses their right to a state-appointed attorney after their direct appeal. This means that the imprisoned innocent have precious few legal resources. If they cannot afford an attorney, they can either teach themselves the law or try to handle their own cases or rely on small, independent, nonprofit like George Anderson Project. The work that the George Anderson Project does is essential. Essential, that's the word I, I, I focus zero in on. It's essential. And we cannot undertake this work without your support. So they get a lot of money, and they give away things you for Give money, you can organize a birthday party, uh, raise awareness, uh, give time. Um, and then, um, but this is um, part of that I like. Uh, that, that, uh, 
give thought. You don't have to be a lawyer or a politician to help reform the criminal justice system. The first change you make can be with the, to the way you see the world. I've done that. At the neighborhood I want to believe I live in, it's in halfway around the world and all four directions to the same point in the, in the ocean. You can't get any bigger neighborhood than that. And a person who actively makes an effort thinking like this is going to think differently than from somebody who thinks of just uh, made the mill, Decatur, DeKalb County, uh, Georgia, uh, South America, be their neighborhood. You're going to think differently. So the judge, I understand, is an elected, is an elected, he's an elected, elected, considered an elected position um, um, by the people, and he's going to represent, he's going to be biased toward giving the, 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 the vote to get him back in to keep the job. So that's, that's right there, he's biased. So when you read a headline, or watch a news story about a criminal case, ask yourself whether you are maintaining the presumption of innocence when you think about the defendant. That's me, defendant. Ask yourself whether you have all the facts you need to understand the case. Ask yourself whether the story is being reported in a way that encourages you to assume the defendant is guilty. Yes, it has been. Uh, by CBS uh, 46, channel, uh, WFB TV Channel 2, uh, Fox 5, AJC. They came out here, interviewed me, they cut me off. And they did not tell the story uh, in, a, in a fair way. The devil prejudice against me. And that's why I have a probation verification here coming up tomorrow. Um, ask yourself whether you have all the facts you need to understand the case. Ask yourself whether the story is being reported in a way that encourages you to assume the defendant is guilty. And ask yourself whether the real story might be more complicated than the one you see on the news. If a story moves you, think about what larger issue it makes visible. If someone is found guilty of a crime they did not commit, then their conviction was made possible by problems that affect the criminal justice system as a whole and not just a single case. And at the time, finishing the story is only the beginning. Every story you encounter gives you a chance to understand not just the society in which it took place, but the society's problem. Nowhere is this more true than when it comes to the imprisoned innocent, whose stories can help us to understand not just one person's experience, but the most impressive problem in our criminal justice system. So I've learned the hard way that um, I thought I was a progressive, that was a progressive neighborhood, but they apparently don't consider me one of them. Now, I'm not considering my neighbors to be bad people, but they but they can be a clicky nut, both uh, wide and no border, or actually they were proven an active wide, but they can be a clicky nut, both wide and a leaded per cut. And um, I've learned the hard way, so if, you know, I used to think conservative were conservative, not because they were, didn't know better. Well, I learned the hard way, they know what they're doing. They're perfectly doing it, the they just don't care. But I used to think the definition of liberal was honest, fair, and reasonable. Well, I've since learned the hard way, that's not true. And I suppose between the two, that the second was the most embittering. And if I were to take a gun and go on a shooting spree, it would probably be his neighborhood. So, the Georgia End of the Project is the hundred is essential. That's the effort you put into it. And I'm holding the judge responsible. That's it. Who it is? It's tough. You sure? I'm dead. Alright. Because we have we have to go. Yeah, I got my kids.